Hi, it's Mary Wagstaff. I want to personally invite you to spend one hour with me, one-on-one, because you deserve to know what's holding you back. It is your time. Alcohol has had its fair share. We're going to talk about possibilities, about how to align your thoughts and actions with your dreams and what matters most to you, about why alcohol is no longer suited for the life you want to live, how you can get on the fast track to freedom from alcohol and stay there without deprivation. Follow the link in the show notes or on my website, marywagstaffcoach.com to schedule your complimentary call. This hour is just for you. Welcome, welcome. My name is Mary Wagstaff. I am a life coach who ended a 20-year relationship with alcohol without labels, counting days, or ever making excuses. In this podcast, we will explore my revolutionary approach to quitting alcohol that breaks all the rules, amazing stories from women who are throwing a better party because of it, and how you can stop drinking and start living. This show is not a substitute for rehabilitation, medical treatment, or advice, so please talk to a health professional if your alcohol consumption is a risk to your mental or physical health. Now on with the show. Well, hello, my beautiful listeners. Welcome back to another episode. We are here. It is week two of 40 Days to Freedom from Alcohol. I hope that you dove into the week's one inquiries of committing and answering the call to the self. And if you are just tuning in and you didn't, you can easily overlap both weeks and you can easily do all of this work together. It's just nice to do it in stages because you want to take time and you want to make that effort to really show up for it. So we know, and I, this often comes up for me and when, when I'm practicing yoga is there's a huge difference between just getting it done and checking it off the list or really being in the practice. So if this means something to you and you are ready to commit to not just changing your relationship to alcohol, Alcohol, but the inquiry, the understanding of how can you rewrite this from a new way so that not only are you living on the other side of alcohol, but you're living in freedom. You're not feeling in deprivation. And that's the difference between different ways of changing something and the reason that it probably hasn't worked before is that you were just solving for the problem of alcohol rather than really understanding all of your beliefs and all of the stories that you had created around alcohol, which are the ones that need to change so that it can become irrelevant and you don't live in deprivation where you're not living the rest of your life thinking, why can't I? But you're living the rest of your life thinking, thank goodness. And I'm so glad that I was willing to be wrong. And so This episode couldn't be coming at a more poignant time in history and in the world. We are being faced with confronting our reality. We are being faced with confronting stories that have been ignored and ways of which we have lived our life without regard to a greater awareness awareness of the other, of um, a global community. So, and this isn't just the other in a way of this person is different from me. This is in this way that we live in this very self-centered reality where the ego creates our reality in the, the world around us. So, so much of the time we get stuck in this one pointed view And until we come into the present moment and we can take a deeper breath there and expand the awareness, and that's why that simple practice of the present moment experience can, you can start to see outside of the confines of the mind, that story that goes on repeat. And that's why an embodiment practice, living in the body a little bit more um, and feeling into the energetics of emotion can also help that process. You can see wow, there is a world 
of possibility happening around me. There is a world of other experiences happening around me that I don't even know of. And when we do that, it creates freedom, not just in the choice for ourselves, but in the in how we show up for the world because we can lead from a place of the heart. And when we when we commit to expansive awareness, that means we're also committing to the the showing up for not knowing, to the thought that maybe I am wrong. Maybe I've been wrong about everything. <laughs> and instead of that being limiting, allow that to be expansive. Allow that there is even more than even the pleasure that you already have, even the, the opportunities that you already have. Is there more inside of this? What if showing up for other people and um, you know, giving of ourselves more and really putting ourselves in this open, vulnerable position to say, I don't know, but I'm willing to be wrong and I'm willing to learn could add more, not just to your life, but to the whole world and be creating a bigger and brighter future than we ever thought possible as a global community. And the work has to start within. If we are not willing to confront our own stories, how can we see through our limitations? If all we're looking through is a pinhole of perception, how can we see the bigger world? And it is the time now. Now is the time we are being called to ascend. And the first and the only way to do that is to go inward. The deeper we go, the higher we can rise and the more capable we are of putting our story and our primary needs a little on the back burner so we can show up and say, my survival right now is taken care of. I can show up to lend a helping hand, to be there because the call to action is there. And I say this all the time that when we create inner peace and we create an expansiveness and grow our capacity to experience emotions, we are changing the world because we are not we are taking personal responsibility and we're not judging and blaming the outside world for the work that we need to do for ourselves. And we are not blaming and judging other people for ways that they are experiencing their life. We take responsibility for the way that in which we want to experience our lives in the way that things are satisfying to us. Just because something is satisfying to us and is the right we think is the right way to be, it does not mean it is the right way necessarily for someone else's life. We are all individuals. So today's week is about confronting the story. And this is probably the most pivotal part of the journey of as far as transformation. It's probably the most challenging, but it is the one that takes the most commitment, the most bravery and courage to dive into. So you can hear the calling all you want, but until you start to confront the story and start to look at the beliefs that you have been unwilling to look at, nothing will change. And you will sit in that place of basically being in denial for until you decide to look at that. So you'll either be in denial or in deprivation. Um, there's a George Orwell quote that I wanted to start with because I thought it was um, so fitting for this week's journey, our week two journey. If you want to keep a secret, you must also hide it from yourself. And we do this incessantly and we do this for our entire lives. We are told one thing and we never question it. And as we grow and we mature, we become more responsible for the ways in which we are in the world because we become responsible a lot of times for other people, for our children, or there's more asked of us as a citizen of the world. And so as a leader, as a female leader in your own life, how do you want to show up and doing that deep inner work of confrontation is the first 
well, we are saying it's the second step, but it is the crucial step. And so why have I really chosen to address my coaching practice in this way of this deep journey of the self is because I truly believe that when you can lead change with inspiration and a sentiment, a greater sense of why, there's so much more passion and embodied expression to to guide and to be a force to move you rather than just from the mind of, I must do this, I must be better from that masculine aspect of, I have to get my shit together now. And so the more we can immerse ourselves into the waters of emotion, the better we get at breathing there. So it's just a practice. And I believe when we take those moments of sentiment, the romance of life, which is sometimes sad, and we gaze longingly into our own eyes in the mirror, or we spend time feeling the deep emotional waters of sadness that is present in the world right now, they are, it is a force that can move us and we expand our capacity so that we can move beyond just our own perspective and what's happening in our own world. And we can show, choose to show up to be wrong, to be vulnerable, to say, I don't know, but I'm willing. And with that capacity, we can create change in the world. And we have to start from looking and confronting the self. So this week we shed the light on our own beliefs and why they are broken or why they're not serving us. And as always, this comes from compassion and observation. But so much of the time we haven't been willing to look at it because of shame and fear. This is the deepest and most challenging part of the journey, like I had said. And here we are to face the root cause of some of this pain where we have failed and and what this means about us because we may have attempted in the past to change our relationship to alcohol and it hasn't worked or it has caused pain in our lives and we are here in this moment to face this head on. So I hope that you're with me and I hope that you're ready. And I know that this might sound dramatic, but this is the work and be open to knowing there is nothing that you can't feel. There is no emotion that can harm you. And if your willingness to go and dive in to the hardest of emotion is there, there is nothing that you can't do on the other side of this. So Just as the story that we are unraveling is subjective based on our own experience, so is all the reasons why we haven't examined it too. What this means about us, what we think that this unraveling this will make us mean about us, what we think it will mean to others if if they find out that we're diving into this inquiry or if we change our relationship with alcohol and we're found out We create all these stories of what the other will think. And the fear or reason to not examine further are also based on limiting beliefs. So all of these things are just stories, again, that we create. So in this time is a great point of stillness, contemplation, and quietude. So when we go in inward, deep down to confront this story, It is a point where we need to take the time and we need to look at this as our number one priority and find true commitment to face this above all else or nothing will change. And so the outer world might get quiet for a little while and that's okay. And you need to be willing to take the time to do this. Everything in life is not always a big party and we have been sold this American dream And we have been told by our mothers, don't be sad. We don't, you know, I want you just to be happy. But this isn't the way to freedom. Just by figuring the next way to feel better isn't the way to ultimate freedom. You have to go in and feel into the shadows in order to find the light. And so there are cycles and seasons to everything in our life. 
deep self-inquiry doesn't have to mean sad or bad. It is actually an act of self-love and growing yourself in a way where right action and expanded awareness becomes more obvious and done with greater ease and clarity. It is amazing what we can convince ourselves of. If you are at the point where you have heard the call, the only way to freedom is to dive in deeply and you are here. So stick with me and stick with yourself. When you are willing to experience any emotion, there is so much freedom on the other side of it that this is where you have to commit to believe that this work is worth it. We must put a name to that which we are seeking freedom from. We have to call it out to begin the process. And this doesn't mean declaring I'm an alcoholic. In fact, this is declaring the opposite of that. This is saying there she is. And so as you dive deeper into the shadow and you unravel all of the muck and all of the story on top of it, you're reaching longingly for yourself on the other side of all of this junk saying, there she is. I see her. There you are. This is saying, I want a better life than the one I currently have where alcohol is in control and is affecting me a great deal to see things as they truly are. And this can be such a painful process for so many of us as it brings up feelings of shame and being wrong. And my invitation is that being wrong is the greatest gift that you can ever give yourself in any situation. Being able to admit, wow, my way isn't just the right way. So much of the time when we stand on principle and we're unwilling to just move forward, and that doesn't always mean just saying I was wrong, but moving forward from what is only hurts us, only keeps us stuck in the past, only wants a solution of someone validating our experience. But in and amongst that, we're missing out on the opportunities to move forward. So throughout this phase of healing, please, with more compassion than ever before, and greater understanding and curiosity needs to be present for this phase to really have the expansive quality that is possible. You need to dive in like a deep story of mystery to see what is on the other side of it and really take that seat of the witness, even as it brings up pain. So think about watching a movie or seeing a great, reading a great novel where you are invoked with sensation, but you're also intrigued with great curiosity. This is where you need to be for this phase. You need to be willing to show up and experiencing, experience whatever, um, whatever comes about. And even though this is just week two, part two of the process, this is like more of the halfway point. Once you can name it and once you can state and declare, I am ready and willing to look at this and really offering the inquiry of why haven't I looked at this and diving into that. And this is going to be so much freedom once you get used to this process of it is okay to look at where Maybe I haven't shown up for myself. Maybe I haven't shown up for other people. Maybe I have been wrong. And you can't ever go back, right? But you can move forward from a new perspective. And that's what this is all about. This is about gaining power and first unraveling the story. The reason that compassion is so important is because you didn't yet have the language or the knowledge until now that there was another way. I spent so much of my life thinking that 
alcohol was the best and brightest version of who I was, that it was the most fun. And that is where all my clients were. They had years and years and years of connection and fun and merriment with alcohol as part of that. So to see on the other side of that almost makes that time feel like it wasn't significant. But none of that matters now. You're in a new phase. You've heard the calling. It's not serving you. So let's dive deeper. You would never learn to read a book until you knew the alphabet. You couldn't learn to tie your shoes until you could walk and balance. So we have this illusion that as adults, we're no longer beginners. And this isn't true. We are still growing into our awareness until the day that we die. And if we're not willing to experience emotions and we're not changing, then we're not growing. The veil of illusion must be lifted so that you may step forward into a future of possibility. At first, I totally know that this seems possible because alcohol has been your truth for so long. You're so deep in it that it's just like, not only is this a veil, but it's a weighted veil. It has solved so many problems that maybe our truth around alcohol isn't from the experience of the present moment, but from your thoughts and emotions, which are fleeting. And what I mean by this is that you're carrying around a truth around alcohol that is based on your past experience. Your brain is holding on to the pleasure and avoiding pain of the past, and it's not living in firsthand experience. So when you tune into what is happening with alcohol in the present moment, it becomes different than your memory of it. And if you can fast forward into the future of what the effects of alcohol will be, it will also be different than your memory of it. So the way to experience change isn't through someone else's story or your story of the past, but it is through the present moment because our thoughts and our emotions are fleeting. They are always changing. The only thing that is true is what is happening right now. <clears throat> we must state what has been limiting, what the pain is, and what is there to dissolve it and move past. So the reason that we're not able to live in the present moment is because we are confronted with reality. Where if we live in the past memories, which are all so much of it is subconscious and conditioned, we are basing this moment of a thought in a feeling from the past of the pleasure response of alcohol. <clears throat> and so what are your thoughts around where you are at? And can we be 100% certain that they are true? What are your thoughts around why it has been so hard or why you see it as impossible to give up and change your relationship with alcohol? So what happens when you avoid this step of the journey, that step of looking inward at where your thoughts are limiting, where your beliefs are limiting, where your beliefs are at, where you may have been wrong, where alcohol and the truth around alcohol is not is no longer the truth of the past, what it means for you to confront this situation, what are the feelings and the thoughts that come up when you think about looking at your relationship with alcohol? If you skip this step in the journey, the self-sabotage continues through avoidance, resistance, and attachment because you are unwilling to look at your subconscious patterning and the patterning of these stories that we are created that we are not aware of. And so by doing this, the problem will continue. And like I had said earlier, you will simply see not drinking as the only solution and I'm offering that rewriting your beliefs around alcohol is the only solution. So the action, and I've talked about this before, the action of not drinking and solving just for the action is not 
a finite solution. It will keep you held back in deprivation. The solution of rewriting your beliefs around alcohol is how you move forward, past, and above. This is how you throw the better party. This is how you stop drinking and start living. This isn't stop drinking and sit in deprivation wishing things were different. So I want you to really understand that this approach is for the betterment, that this step is going to propel you, expedite the process of your growth. And if this, if you don't have desires of living a more happy, satisfied, fulfilled life, and you just simply want to, to stop drinking, then you will sit in pain and deprivation for you know, probably the rest of your life if you're never willing to confront and look at the truth of your reality and the truth of your mind. And this is not to be said with shame or blame. This is to be simply observed from an open perspective because it is the human condition that the ego mind is conditioned until we become aware enough and mature enough to be at a place where we can say, you know what, I think I can start to explore and discover this. It is part of the growth process that we're not come, we don't come out of the womb just already examining our awareness. Some people are a little bit more existential than others, and there are some cultures that dive deeper into contemplative studies from an earlier age. But more than likely, the process of inquiry, the process of inquiring and becoming aware of being aware, and that we can even look at our thoughts to see where they're limiting us, could be a new concept altogether. We're not taught emotional intelligence or self-inquiry so much in school put into those ways or mindfulness. And this is beyond even, um, you know, these general catchphrase terms of gratitude and mindfulness. This is really, where am I falling short? Where are my thoughts really limiting me? And our willingness to move beyond that. I am so grateful for my willingness to be wrong. I am so grateful to just be blown away again and again and again by what I don't know. And when you can put yourself there, what what else do you have to lose? What else can be possible from being in such a state of expansiveness. And now I work on this every day with the little things that bug me with my children, you know, my children and my partner. It's just like that when they talk about like, don't sweat the small stuff, it's kind of like, yeah, is this my satisfaction or is this the right way? Right. And so much of the time we get those things confused because there is no right way that everyone should be acting. There is our desires and then there is us allowing other people to live their lives the way that they need to live them for themselves and to create a community where we can all cohabitate and we can all live based on our own satisfaction. We have to be open to a diversity of perspective and a diversity of living and so much stress and strife comes because we have chosen that there is a right way and we impose those thoughts on the other people around us. And that creates this disharmony in ourselves when they're not showing up the way we think they should. And so we have to dive in to start to look at those ways in which we are choosing to have those limiting beliefs. So right now, you have some version of a story in your brain of why it's so hard to leave behind. And there's all of this future focus of what about this time? What about this time? What about my me, my me time and downtime? And how will I cope? And all of the fun things that won't be the same with alcohol and it will never be the same again. And that is what you're believing. But I am here to tell you that that is not true. None of those thoughts are true. You can live the most fulfilled, satisfied, amazing, abundant, pleasure-filled life where memories will be remembered and you will be a fuller expression of who you are without alcohol. 
And now I just want you to breathe into that as a possibility, that as believable. But the first way to start to look at that being believable is to see what you already do believe. So there is some version of that for you that nothing will ever be the same again. When you step forward into the life with the willingness to be wrong, you free yourself from the cage of illusion by seeing a world of possibility. Rather than proving your beliefs to yourself based on past attempts to change and the failures of trying to change or circumstances that you have chosen to deem it impossible, you look for the proof that all of these reasons, that these are all of the reasons of why you can't change. And before you try to prove yourself wrong, you must first begin the inquiry of what is the story I have been living into. And so we've all been lied to at some point or another. And it can be a threat to our reality of, wow, how I just lived an entire illusion or it can be the freedom that there is so much outside of our spectrum of experience that anything is possible. So do you see how those two things feel differently? Is this lie a threat to what we thought we knew to be true? Or can I take this, sit with it, feel into the emotions of, wow, holy crap. There is a whole new world to experience outside of the spectrum of anything that I ever even knew. And this can be really jarring. And so that's why this next week, I really want you to take this time for yourself to get quiet, to be in contemplation. And that might mean turning off the TV, leaving the cell phone, turning off the computer when you're not working, spending some softer time with your kids, picking up their socks when they don't want to, just leaving everything else and taking this time to just be contemplative because you can be contemplative while you're in the action of doing what you're doing, just getting a little bit quieter. And so we aren't just moving outside of the box, but we're just trying to get rid of the box altogether because what is the box anyway, right? I mean, the box is this little box that we've kind of been born into of societal norms and these stories and these things of, you know, this box of privilege, of choice, and all of these ways in which we function that is not even real also. We have the stories from our parents, what we were taught at school. There is so much limiting there. The media, politics, and then our own brain and our own experience wrapped up in all of it. And what if it was all not serving us anymore? What if all of that could be blown away and you could just be brought into a future of freedom with a brand new reality? And so... We see how we treat ourselves, and this translates into what we see in the world. How we want the world to change to make us feel better. Instead of looking at all of this as daunting and saying, feeling like you are you don't have control, we use the privilege of choice, of observation of the witness, that ability to look at ourselves as that third-party perspective. We use that as a tool for empowerment, not to be overwhelmed, to say, wow, there is so much possibility. And then we make a decision from right action based on truth. And the only way to find truth is to discover what are the stories that we've been telling ourselves. You must expand your view of reality of what's possible so that you can be the solution for your own life and a light to support others as well. And so if you are always looking for someone outside or something outside 
to be the solution, you will never get there. No one can expand your mind. No one can expand your heart. You have to dive in to do the work. And right now your story around alcohol and probably a great other many things is very limited and we can only see in our field of awareness. So right now is the opportunity for you to say, my field of awareness is narrow and I want to expand it or, you know, however narrow it is. And this isn't a bad thing. This is an opportunity for more. And so, like I said, from how we were raised and the influences in our outer world, our mind becomes conditioned with thoughts we are unaware we are even thinking. And until we slow down, we don't even realize that every action has had a thought before to create the process of making and taking that decision and that action. We repeat the same thoughts in the subconscious mind over and over again, and it loops until now it is our belief system. We base so many of our decisions in the present moment on what feels familiar, even when we have experienced pain in the past. Familiarity will override that memory of the pain of the alcohol has caused us. And from there, we think we can predict the future. If we only live from what we know, our lives become narrow and full of limitations. Sobriety is a great time of illumination in so many ways. Not only are we kind of lifting that haze of the effects of alcohol, but by doing the work this way, you are really showing yourself, wow, This thing that I thought to be so true and when you prove and that switch flips in your brain and you live on the other side of alcohol and you no longer desire it and it no longer seems like an interesting option to you, you really wonder, wow, what else has been limiting me? What other stories have I created? And as diverse as our world maybe has been in the past, it is still limited to a fraction of what exists in the big spectrum of the world of other people's experiences. And this is just the material world. And so think about on the, in the quantum level of, you know, we talk about this collective consciousness and how this really is changing the field of the vibration in which we're living in. And that's why so many people now are diving into the inquiry of the self as the opportunity to extend and expand beyond matter, just even beyond the 3D of what is non-essential. Um, and that's really just from the human experience. That's just from our perspective and our senses. And we know there's so many other um living things in the world that see this reality in a different way. And I think that's a really fun way to look at what's possible also is that the way that we see the moon, the way that we see a rainbow is just from our senses, right? So we don't even have a clue about what's possible. And the ego mind and emotions are useful, but they are very limiting It is here in this step where we choose to see the shadow of hurt and pain and limitation, to name it and to free ourselves from it. When we can consciously decide it's time to live in a new way, then there's another road to take that a life without alcohol is and will be even more amazing. So you have your life intention now, and if you don't, go back and make one because that is such a crucial point to know where in your highest self you can start to fact check (laughs) these limiting beliefs. It's like, actually, that's not really who I want to be. And so, for example, one of my beliefs is to be present with all of my senses and to experiencing experience life as it truly is. Well, when I had that as one of my life intentions and I went back to look 
Well, alcohol didn't meet that in any way, shape, or form. It didn't allow me to be present with all of my senses and to experience life as it truly is. It was a mask. It put blinders on. It dulled my emotions. It dulled all my senses. Now you can seek to see that all of the ways in which your truest self, not from the past or the future, but in this very moment, is not in alignment with the effects of alcohol. And it's really both of those things. So you plant and you really get clear about the highest self, and then you go deeper to look at the, the illusions that you've we've been created through the subconscious. So remember, this isn't your fault. This is the human condition, my friend. This is just the way that the human brain works. The vibration of alcohol and its quality in life or what it does is not at the vibration of which those life intentions that you created um, are exist. The vibrational frequency of the effects of alcohol are very low. It is a depressant. It is this thing that doesn't make us sharp. It doesn't make us energized. It doesn't make us motivated. And all of those life intentions from your values, those statements that you created for your highest and truest self are the vibrational frequencies that you want to live into. And so when we attach to the low vibration, it's really hard to pull ourselves out there. So that's why we have to see it, identify it, and name it. As we grow older, we can see that things are in life that we that don't resonate with who we are. We choose a new path, a new career, new family, new friends, hobbies, pastimes. And so for this week, you have to start to look at why you have been unwilling to look at your relationship with alcohol. And so that's the question. Why have I been unwilling to look at my relationship with alcohol? What do I think this means about me? What are my fears about the opinions of others? What do I shame myself for? Just in general. What do I think is ugly or unpleasant about who I am? And we have all these thoughts and we have to confront them in order to change them, in order to see that they're not true. What am I most scared to discover about myself? And earlier, back to that George Orwell quote, what are the secrets that are so deep that I've even been hiding from myself? And do I know any of these things to be true? And put down what those are. How does this make me feel? Are these things true? And if they are, how does it make me feel? Who would I be outside of this fear? So if there wasn't fear there around alcohol, around you looking and examining your relationship with alcohol, who would you be on the outside of that? Who is that person? Are your fears from firsthand experience or are they based on the past or the stories from maybe your parents or those who raised you or society or a commercial that this is the best key to your vacation lifestyle. Where do they come from? What if leaving alcohol behind was the greatest gift I ever gave to myself? How would that make me feel? And so in addition to answering those questions, which I'll put in the notes for this week's inquiries, I want you to write a letter to yourself about your ideal situation on the other side of alcohol. If changing your relationship with alcohol was the key to the best version of your life and it created freedom and it was irrelevant, what would that story, that letter look like from that person in the future to where you are now. So it would start a little something like, um, I can't believe that we spent all of those years thinking about alcohol and that it was going to be worse. I am so glad I was wrong. 
And so you also add in how would you um, love to think about yourself in that future place where alcohol was gone? How would you think about others? How would you think about life? This expanded version. And I want you to step into this version of, you know, you see a person walk, you've, we've all met this person who's just bubbly and glowing and they're a friend to nature and to animals and to life. And they're willing to be wrong and be vulnerable and be raw and daring and brave and cry and be soft and all of these things. What if you could lean into a version like that, blowing your own mind about what's possible because What's the worst that can happen? And then you move on if it does. And asking yourself that, what's the worst that can happen if I keep digging deeper into this inquiry? So go back to your life intention, the statement of who you want to be in the world and how do they tell a different story than the story of alcohol? Offer yourself the opportunity here to be curious about, wow, I can't believe that I've been thinking that. Of course, with the way that I feel about myself, I've been wanting to drown my emotions in booze. Of course, if I think the only way to have a good time is by lowering my inhibitions so I can be less of who I am, of course, I've continued to drink alcohol. I want you to be open and soft with yourself. I want you to look and gaze into your own eyes and say, I'm ready to meet you again and say, this is the time and you need to state it and go deep. And if the feelings of shame and guilt and fear come up, I want you to meet them. I want you to say, hey, I'm not scared of you and you go deeper and you do it anyway because this is the moment This is the step of the journey where true transformation starts to happen. And it can be very, very scary, but I am here to support you. I am here to tell you, I know this process of the journey and it is the moment where true transformation of being able to see yourself in the ways that only you have limited your ability to move forth has existed. And it is also you and those limitations that you've set on yourself that can also be your expression of freedom, of holding yourself to a higher standard. But you have to first see the limitations of all of the ways of which you have shamed and blamed and said, I am not enough and I am not worthy. And you have just dumped booze on all of that so that you don't feel it. No longer is that an option if you wish to move forward. I am here for support and for inquiry, and there are so many women, and that's why these interviews are so important. There are so many women who have gone through the same experience of feeling that shame and that blame, but it is here in the fires of the depths of the shadow where we can burn up the illusion to set ourselves free, and that's when it's almost like the spontaneous transformation happens but you have to be willing to look at it. And this is why sober people all over the world, the ones that are inspired anyway, are, you know, screaming at the top of their lungs. It's because they, it's like they found a cure for the incurable, that their life is so much more enjoyable that they can't believe without shame that they waited so long to dive deep into this inquiry, but we only can get there when we're ready to, right? It's like that, idea that we're only given so much that we can handle in a day. But if you're here, I trust and believe that you are ready for this inquiry. If you are listening to this message right now, and sometimes we need to push ourselves a little bit further to get to where we want to go and say, I might not be, might not think I'm ready, but that could also be a limiting belief. And so at one point, I also didn't think it was possible to have a life on the other side of alcohol. I was the rallier. I was the partier. I got everyone together. I distributed. I was ready. I never left booze up. My, I never left my alcohol consumption up to anyone else. I always showed up 
with knowing exactly what I was going to drink and had it prepared, I couldn't imagine my life on the other side of alcohol until one day I was there. And I'm here to tell you, you got to check it out because it's fucking awesome. I love you so much. And from a deep place of radical self-love, I am now able to step forward and to offer whatever I am called for of in the world and whatever that needs to be and however I need to dive into it. So if there is any way that this platform can help you or your cause or you have a question or there's something else bigger that we can discuss here that I don't yet have the words for or the inquiry for, I am offering this as a pivot point for a bigger solution. And I truly believe that when we heal ourselves, we heal the world, not just because we're more peaceful, but because we're more capable of showing up for hearing the pain of the other without getting involved. We are here to show up free of judgment and neutrality and say, how can I be part of the solution? How can I help from where I'm at? I might not have the words, I might not have the understanding, but I'm ready and willing to do what I can from where I'm at without my ego being involved. Because when we tune into radical self-love, we are living at the place of the heart and an expanded awareness from the present moment, not from what, what, what was, not from what we thought was going to be possible based on those limiting stories, but from a place of the heart-centered experience of the present moment. And that is the place where the future is limitless. And that is the place we all need to breathe into right now because we need to create a new world where there is freedom for all people and for all beings everywhere. I hope you have an amazing day. Please write to me and send me your questions and comments about this process and about the podcast. And I need, I need to have content for our sixth episode. So I'm gathering questions, I'm gathering inquiries, but it is your voice that helps support the other person listening to this, the person that might not have the courage to write to me. So send me, it will be all in confidentiality. Please send me and email me your inquiries and your questions and your breakthroughs and your aha moments. All of those things I want to share with our listeners so we can all support each other because it is in sharing our stories and in sharing our heart that we support the collective. Mary at marywagstaffcoach.com. Just put in it podcast comment, podcast question, inquiry, and I will gather those all up. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Show up for yourself. Show up for the world and show up for the other without judgment, without question because we need to take and make this not about me but about we so we turn when we're able to do the work for me we are so much more capable to do the work for we and it is so important i love you i love you i love you blessings to all beings everywhere and may all beings everywhere know peace have a great day the process of unraveling your story outside of the confines of alcohol is truly a sacred and beautiful journey of the self. Rediscover who you are in a whole new world again. Stop by my website, marywagstaffcoach.com to get instant access to the on-demand workshop of my revolutionary five shifts approach. And while you're there, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we will create together your life intention. This is the framework for which all of your decisions around alcohol are made from your truest and highest self. In addition to working remotely worldwide, I host private one-on-one -on -one healing retreats at my sanctuary in Mount Hood, Oregon. I can't wait to connect.